Hey guys, it's your girl Stephanie, the Quilting Beauty. Welcome and welcome back to my corner of YouTube. Here on my channel, I do talk about my latest quilting projects, skincare items and beauty related items for the maturing beauty, Christian books, and of course my Christian faith. I pray that you and your family are all doing well on today and that you enjoy today's video. So let's get into it. Okay, let's get into this review. Here is the new Spirit Field Life Bible, and it's by Jack W. Hayford, and it says Kingdom Equipping Through the Power of the Word, and this is in the NIV version. This Bible is the hardcover version. When you remove the dust jacket, the Bible is a gray with silver dove and silver writing on the spine. Okay, let's open this beauty up. We open it up to a presentation page. Then there is a title page. Then a title page with the editors, and it tells you which version it is. Then the next page is the contents. And then on this page, or these pages, I should say, as the introduction, let me um, bring this up just a little bit so we can see both pages. Okay, I'm probably be out of focus a little bit, but there it is. An introduction pages, contributor pages. And now we are about to get into the nitty gritty of this Bible. It is one of the main reasons why it's one of my favorite Bibles. The section Kingdom Dynamics is actually broken down into three different parts. You have the topic part that's based on a scripture. We have clusters, which are um, specific um, spiritual truths that you know the editors and the contributors um, collaborated with to, be, um, to create the clusters and then we have six articles which is located in the back of the book so once we get back there I would definitely um, show those to you but for the kingdom dynamics what we're going to concentrate on are the ones that's in this gray box with the uh, burgundy color or maroon color dove. Here, I zoomed in on the first kingdom dynamic and it is coming from Genesis 1 verse 1 and it's talking about God's sovereignty. That is a topic that they're referring to from verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth I also want to point out with the kingdom dynamics, there is a chain that um, leads you to the next topic here. There is an asterisk in front of the slash. That means that is the beginning. This is the beginning of the chain. And then it tells you the verses. And then it tells you the um, editor that it's who wrote this or who created this kingdom dynamic. If the asterisk is on this side, it means that that is the end of the chain. Now we're back at the beginning of the Bible. The next section is word wealth. And this is when it gives some key words and then it gives the Strong's number, Strong's concordance number and a short definition. It also has a word wealth index all of these words that are highlighted here 
they're listed in this index, which is a couple pages long. Now, let me show you, I'm sorry, let me show you how this works. Again, let's go to Genesis 1 and 1, and here is the word wealth. It's in pink with the silver gray sword, and the word that they're focusing on is created. As you can see, created is um, bold in bold print here, and then it gives the pronunciation, the Strong's number, and the definition. Also, do you see these diamonds? You have one next to God, heavens, and earth. Here is the cross-reference um, section of the Bible. Here is Genesis 1 and 1. And then as you count the diamonds, this first one goes to the first diamond. The second one goes to heavens, the second diamond. And the third one goes to earth, the um, third diamond. So let's turn to the one that says, see word wealth at Exodus 32, 13. Let's go there. Okay, now we are at Exodus 32, and it said 13. Here is... The 13 right here and then this is the word land even though they were referring to the word earth over in Genesis 1 and 1 but as you come up to the word wealth it talks about land and it says that land and it gives a strong concordance number the first one it says it's also meaning earth land and ground so that's how it worked. Okay, we're now back in the front of the Bible and we're in the truth in action section. And that is a section where it just have um, practical features showing ways to apply the words, um, the truth of the Bible. And then it gives you a truth and then it tells you how you can um, walk it out. Here's a chart that's showing like the Old Testament and the New Testament, and they give you on what page the truth and actions are on. Next, there's a charts page, an in-text maps page, the preface to the um, NIV version of this Bible. And then they have the books of the Bible, the Old Testament, the New Testament, along with their abbreviations. And then it has the title page for the Old Testament. Then when it comes to the books of the Bible, each book of the Bible has an um, introduction. I call it introduction page. It tells the author the date and the themes and keywords that are applicable in this book. It also gives an outline of an outline of Genesis, and it gives you the um, scriptures that it's pertaining to. Here is, again, the word wealth, kingdom dynamics, the cross-reference, and then the study portion of the Bible. Okay, let's turn to the next section. And that is in between the Old and New Testament. And we have bridging the Testaments. And it's just uh, giving you history of the time period between the Old and New Testament. Then they give you the harmony of the Gospels. And that's they have all the Gospels located in one area. And they have the events or topics. And 
it's pretty much giving you reference points to where they all exist in the Bible. Or where they're talked about throughout the Bible, in the, the, throughout the Gospels, I'm sorry. Okay, the next section is in the New Testament and the words of Christ are in red. Let's turn to the next section. This section is called in studying the book of revelations the book of revelations and it says here it's in order to allow virtually any believer not only to find material suited to the interpretation of their church tradition but to afford the opportunity of comparative study with other interpretive approaches for helps have been provided and what they mean is in in this book they have it where they call it, let's see, down in a study section. I'm trying to find one. It's called dis dispensational interpretation. So that gives a more, um, a point of, someone's point of view on what it means in that scripture. And it says that each text where the dis dispensational interpretation is noted for comparative study the words um, dispensational interpretation appears all the other notations they say are general information involving no interpretive bias or may present the interpretation of the classical historical historical approach okay I hope I explained that well but it just got the classic approach and then they give one of a more of an interpreter's approach. The next section, make sure I didn't miss one. Yes. The next section is, you remember when we were talking about in the kingdom dynamics, there was a section at the end. And that gives six different um, articles on the um, different spiritual truths like this one is the gift of the holy spirit gifts and power the next one is the holy spirit and restoration the next one is a flame with passion for world evangelism the next one is the believer's potential and pathway for ministering healing to the nations. And I think this is the last one, I think. Understanding mes um, Messianic Jewish ministry. Oh, here's one. How to lead a person to the Savior, principles of personal evangelism. And that was it for those. The next section is the introduction to the NIV concordant, concordance. Now, of course, everyone knows a strong concordance is based off of the King James Version. It has their own small concordance in here for NIV. The next section is notes. Oh, before I go continue, I wanted to show you how it's a small section, but again, it's A through Z of the concordance. N notes. And then the last is maps. They give you some nice, colorful maps. Here is um, World of the Patriarchs, Exodus and Conquest of Canaan, Land of the Twelve Tribes. I think that one is pretty cool to know. Um, Kingdom of David and Solomon, Jesus's ministry, and it has like a appears to to after the resurrection, and it tells you where it was, and this is where he cleared the temple, and then here is one he restores widow's son to life. That that one is really cool. I just hadn't seen this one or paid in much attention to that one. That one is pretty cool. And then Paul's missionary journeys. Which is come. This map is going to come in handy because I am reading a book called, 
I just started today reading the book called Paul's Paul the Apostle of Christ. So that is gonna be pretty cool to reference back to this. And the last one is Jerusalem in the time of Jesus. And that's it in the back cover. And that is my review. And this ends my review of the New Spirit Field Life of Bible. I do highly recommend it. Like I stated in the um, 20 um, question tag with um, the Kingdom Sisters that I like this Bible so much that I would like to also get the um, New King James Version of it. So, until next time, guys. Bye.